Anne Davenport and I really love mermaids. I would like you to sit on my shoulder as I create something in my art journal. Now, usually when I sit down to create and I don't know what I'm going to do, I just feel creative, but I don't know exactly what I want to do. And first of all, I just get some of my stuff out and I get some of my journals out and have a think about what um, feels good to create in, in that moment. So at the moment I've got my butterfly effect book out and I've also got one of my hardbound art journals. And I've only just started this one, it's just, it's a new one. And I just feel like using that. So that is what I'm going to use. My next step is to just quickly run through the journals. I love doing that, just flipping through and seeing if something calls to me. And I've got this beautiful paint that I've already painted. I've used um, my <laughs> gorgeous colours from the Jane's favourite uh, paint set of mine. Also comes with a cute brush and a stencil. And the reason these colours are my favourites is, well I love them, but also they work so beautifully together. They have a fourth friend <laughs> in the set and I just know that if you use those colours you can't make a mess because you've got my favourite colours and they're completely beautiful. So to me, they've got just a deliciousness when you put them together that's just yum. And the paint is very, very matte. So you can put watercolour on it, my magic wands, crayons, whatever you want. And rub-ons stick on there beautifully as well. So I adore rub-ons in general, but I especially adore my own rub-ons, of course. And I've you know, got this cute little washi tape set they like little stickers, fantastic for planners and for journals, diaries, all of those things, but also great for our journals. So I've let my journal speak to me, I've let the pages speak to me, I've let the supplies speak to me. Now I've got a little starting point. So I am cutting out the rub on, leaving the backing paper on there so I can move it around and work out exactly where I'm going to place it. And the reason I love all of my collage elements, rub-ons, those sorts of things that I have in my range is because I can audition. You can do the same thing with the stencils as well and the stamps and you can work out where you're going to put them on the page before you actually uh, put them on there so you can let that give you ideas and let you work that out a bit in ahead of time. So I've popped that down and uh, I'm just pulling out one of my magic wands, which are my coloured pencils, and they work beautifully on my acrylic paint. So I've started drawing in a colour called Mermaid. I've just realised that you can't see that because it's the same as the colour in the background. Much better to use this colour called Ink, which is a little bit darker. Now I used to be a normal person and just use pencils and other drawing instruments but when I started teaching online I very quick, quickly discovered that it's hard to see clearly light coloured pencil. So I started drawing in bright colours and I've never stopped so I adored drawing in coloured pencil and when you're drawing with coloured pencil on acrylic paint you can erase but what I'd like you to do is try not erasing. For a start, erasing can actually cause a little waxy sort of waterproof area because, you know, the rubber is getting, is smushing the pencil around and you can get a little waterproof area. I say just live with the lines. When you see me drawing, you can see that I'm not worried about being perfect. I'm just letting lines happen where they may. And looking at this um, mermaid, as she's going to turn out to be, uh, there's nothing perfect about her. I've got the head and you know that a head is attached to a neck so I've drawn a neck and you know that a neck is attached to shoulders so I've gone out to the shoulders. You know that arms come out of shoulders uh, and because she's in the water the arms can just float out. This is why drawing mermaids are wonderful for people who haven't drawn figures before. 
You've just gone into her chest, her upper torso, in at the waist, out at the hips, and then a flourish around to her fin and her tail. And I can just keep playing around with those lines. And look, there's messy pencil going all over the place. It just looks like movement. It just gives her movement in the water. Oh, don't worry about it. Next, I want to do some hair, of course, so that she's got the most famous mermaid trait of all, the beautiful hair. And I'm just letting that float down and curl and gesticulate <laughs> into the water, undulate. When you're drawing hair, I say be the hair. Start where the hair grows from the part and follow that hair all the way down to the very, very ends of it so that you're, you're not drawing little lines that end up looking like little split hairs, split ends. And um, you don't have to draw every hair. You just have to draw the container and our imagination will fill that in. And I just want to get a little bit of gesso out, which is translucent. And I tend to use always use my gesso rather than white paint because it has this nice translucent property and it's very 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 matte so it takes other media beautifully um, I love gesso so much I named my dog gesso <laughs> so I'm just filling in her figure now the other thing I could have done is left her with the bright colors on her body and put maybe the gesso on the background so that she came out but because her face is already that stark white I thought I'm going to make her body uh, that white but it will be translucent and I'm thinking she might be a plankton mermaid she might be Marie Planktonette <laughs> And I'm going to leave her little top uh, with the paint colours so that she's sort of camouflaging into the background. And I might leave her tail in those colours too. I will work that out as we go. But I'm um, just adding that paint. And I'm changing her body shape a little bit, bringing her waist down, making her shoulders a little bigger, making her arms a little bigger, because I, I felt like her head was a little bit, uh, of a bobble head and she might uh, bounce to the surface and uh, get hit by a boat which would do no one any favours so <laughs> I'm just making changes as I go that's the beautiful thing about being an artist about being creating something is you can make the changes and it's your art so if Things aren't perfect from the get-go, it doesn't matter. Just tinker with them until they feel good. I don't like the word perfect. I just like my work not to annoy me. And I just, I don't try and think about things being a masterpiece or things lasting the test of time or other people ever looking at them. I'm in the moment. I'm enjoying the feeling of the paint on the paintbrush going on the paper and looking at the beautiful colours and just enjoying that creative time that I've taken. Uh, it doesn't, nothing else matters. It's the process for me. That's the important thing. And I'm always saying trust the mess, which means all of these things, these imperfection, this looseness, uh, making little changes on the go and just enjoying yourself, making a mess, in the end, it turns out fantastic. Uh, you might just need a little bit of practice, but it always it works out in the end. And even if it doesn't, if it does turn out to be a hot mess, trust it anyway, you had a good time. <laughs> While the little body is drying, I'm going to put on some cheeks. I think she needs a little bit of life in those cheeks. So I'm just using some of my pink acrylic and then using a dab brush just to swirl it on. Now remember, I'm on the rub-on, which has a different feeling than painting on the acrylic paint. With my rub-ons, I do have a matte, or just a slight, slight satin finish, but we made them as matte as possible so that you could work on top of them. Just remember that they are, you know, a very tiny film, a very thin film rather, and they're not delicate, but 
you just need to be mindful not to, you know, stab at it. <laughs> Get out sandpaper and start rubbing at them unless you want a distressed effect. I'm also adding a little bit of gesso on there just to soften, just pastelize that out. So she's got a slight little bit of pink, a little bit of pink in her lips. And now I want to add some definition. Because the rub on has the darker lines around it, I am using my incredible pen uh, with the black ink to add some definition to her hair and onto her body as well. Now keep in mind that there is acrylic paint and it's still drying and I definitely do not want that getting in the nib of my beautiful fountain pen. I want it, I want my fountain pen to keep working. So I just need to be mindful of that, that's all. And again with hair, remember start at where it grows and be the hair, grow from the root to the tip. Keep your lines undulating and we don't need perfection. Just like real hair, our hair drawing can be a little bit unruly as well and it looks even better. So if you've got other little lines, you know, hitting off here or there, that's just the little flyaway hairs and that's what makes something look real. Now I am drawing on acrylic paint that is dry. I can't emphasize that enough. But I don't want to outline, I just want to add a little bit of definition. So I'm going slowly, just adding little lines here and there. Now I don't have time to give you a full lesson on drawing the figure, but if you want to learn, I do have online workshops where I teach you all of that. And it's not as hard as you would think. I actually learnt uh, figure drawing in Paris. Mm. <laughs> I studied fashion illustration and absolutely adore it. And I've done a hundred million billion years worth of life drawing classes. And I bring all of that to my online workshop. So although I can't go, you know, teach you everything that I know in this one little video, that information is around for you. What I'm doing now on screen though is using one of my paint over pens in a colour called, guess what, Mermaid. Uh, I'm using that to outline her just to help pop her out from the background. And this is an experiment just to see how this works. Now very often I would use white and I would have her skin colour actually be a skin colour either, you know, from a light porcelain through to a beautiful ebony dark. But I've already, you know, used that bright white for her plankton because she's Mary Planktonette. I've used that colour already. So I've got to use something else. So I've used my uh, um, mermaid, that beautiful aqua blue. But you can see the effect because I'm using it in the hair because I don't have the white in the hair. See how it pops things out? Now... Here's something, when we do something, when you add something and you think, whoa, that really makes my drawing pop, very often we then tend to think, right, I'm going to add this everywhere. And then you lose that pop because it's, you know, you've just added it all over the place. So that is when I've done something that I think, oh, I love that, I make myself put down whatever tool I'm using and let my eyes refreshen, let my thoughts catch up so that I can have a look at what I'm doing before I, you know, dilute what it was that I really, really loved. So I'm being very good, putting that pen down, adding a little bit of that blue from the background into her eyes, integration, that's called. And um, hmm, just thinking, what am I going to do to her next? Am I going to colour in her tail? Look how different she is. You would never guess that I got her from Jane Davenport Mixed Media. Rub on. She's just this pretty thing. So now I've got to think about what am I going to do for her tail? Do I do turquoise? No. I'm going to go a beautiful dark blue. That's the ink colour because she is from the inky depths and uh, maybe this is how she mesmerises and captures her prey. She sort of glows in the dark and her tail, her powerhouse is hidden. 
And the beautiful part about my blue is that it's really dark if you put it on in its full intensity, but if you add water to it or a little bit of gesso, which is what I've just put in there, then you can see all of the different blues. It's actually a really beautiful deep phthalo blue and you get such massive variety in the colour and just by putting that bit of white in there and then flapping my brush around a little bit, I'm creating shading. And I didn't really have to even do anything, just create some visual interest. Incidentally, this cute little brush, this cute little turquoise brush, comes with my little four sets of paints. So you've got the little brush and a stencil. Mm, very nice. Oh, I should have used the stencil for the... Oh, mermaid scales. I didn't think of that until just now. Mm, anyway, I'm adding that blue in there, letting that gesso rub in a little bit. And while I have that little bit of blue left on my brush, I'm just putting it in the darker part of her hair just to give a little shading. And I can use this to sh add some shadowing to the actual body. So in between her breasticles, uh, just there under her arm, just, you know, where the light would be coming from the top of the water, wouldn't it? And she would have some shadowing underneath. So I'm just, just slight, just a little bit of light shadowing. And then adding my paint over pen in the mermaid around it as well, just so it echoes what's happening on the other side. Just being careful of that wet acrylic paint because that will ruin my paint over pen as well. And just as I have on the other side, I'm adding a little bit of white as well, making sure that I clean off any stray acrylic. Now I really, really want to add some of my washi phrase stickers on here. So this is actual washi tape. And I love how this turns out with the uh, washi tape there, just breaking it apart um, behind her head. It just gives it a modern feeling. And with that white outline, she kind of looks like a sticker herself. I love it. I'm using my paint over pen to create some scales and I don't have to add the scale all over her tail. It can just be here and there. Now I'm also going to add just a little bit more washi tape. Uh, I've got this other one with my writing. It's so funny because it's my artwork that I'm adding back into the journals where they came from kind of cool. <laughs> now I'm using my incredible pen and writing out a beautiful quote. I dream of things that never were and say why not by Robert F. Kennedy. And why not is something my dad has said to me from the start of my life. Why not? Why not try? Why not do it? Why not give it a go? I love it. Uh, and what I was just doing there is because this is ink, on top of paint, it does take a little bit of time to dry. So rather than smear it, which is probably what would happen, <laughs> just put a bit of paper towel over there. And now I'm doing, this is something that I enjoy doing myself. It's quite fiddly, it's quite finicky, but I love putting the white <laughs> pen around my words. And I mean, this is fine. I have let that ink dry. I'm not drawing on top of the ink, so I'm not smearing it. And it does take a little bit of time, so I've let this go into fast forward because it would be boring. But you can try this as well. And I'm not saying that I do the most beautiful lettering in the universe by any means, but I do enjoy lettering. And one of the things that is, I think, sometimes the hardest for uh, people to get used to is their own lettering, especially if you're like me and you follow amazing calligraphers and letterers on Instagram and you can sort of mess with your own confidence a little bit and you think, well, oh, my poor little lettering. But it's of your own hand and it doesn't matter. And it's got its own personality. Then I noticed that I have this little face from the washi down the bottom and she's dreaming. And that goes with the quote of, you know, this dreamy figure of the mermaid. So it kind of all fitted in. But then I noticed, see the other washi tape of the girl with the eyes dreaming, the eyes shut. And I thought, wait a minute, I need to use a different washi. 
I need to use this sticker. So I'm going to change things. The beautiful part about washi tape is that you can, if you're careful, I'm not saying just tear at it like a wild animal, but just lift it up gently, pull it off, because this is what it was invented for. Japanese washi tape is invented was invented for gift giving so that people could elegantly open up a gift. And so it can be saved and reused and it's that whole Japanese elegance thing. So we can enjoy that in our art. <laughs> and now she really is dreaming, but now I, I can't just waste my little bit of washi tape. So I've got this other page, which that's obviously a skyscraper on her head now. So that is what's going to happen. And it's just a girl with a lot on her mind. So I just have two journal pages for one. I'm so happy. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this little adventure with me and <laughs> that you will try creating from a rub on. They're so versatile in my gorgeous journal. Paper is so awesome with my beautiful paints. Thank you for having me here today and for watching.